Hello, everyone. Happy Friday, and welcome to Trailing Second Spotlight Workshop. <clears throat> My name is Sally Yusuf Rosales. I'm a Senior Technical Insight Sales Specialist at Trailing, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's topic is ClinCap AU, capping for self-amplifying mRNAs. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your WebEx control panel. <clears throat> I'll bring them up at the end of the presentation. Without further ado, please let me introduce you to our presenter, Trialing Senior Director of Emerging Science and Innovation, Dr. Anton McCaffrey. Thanks, Sally. So today I'd like to tell you a little bit about a novel way that we've developed here at Trialink for capping self-amplifying RNAs. So first, a little bit about Trilink. So Trilink has been around for about 23 years, and we specialized in highly modified oligonucleotides, including single guide RNAs for CRISPR. We also offer a wide variety of custom and uh, catalog NTPs. And uh, today I'm gonna focus on a technology that we developed at Trilink <clears throat> called CleanCap, which is a way of doing co-transcriptional capping of messenger RNAs. We're also the first and leading contract manufacturer for messenger RNAs. And we also provide GMP services for manufacturing all of the above for your clinical needs. So we're a contract manufacturer, so we don't develop our own therapeutic programs. We develop your programs for you. And we provide all the solutions you need for contract manufacturing of messenger RNAs. And today we're gonna to focus a little bit on vaccines and so we can support you in your early stage um, clinical programs for vaccines, including GMP manufacturing. And we've been doing GMP manufacturing for over five years. And a little bit later, I'll tell you about some of our capabilities. So first of all, what are the applications of messenger RNA? So these are varied. So they're quite popular in the field of genome engineering for CRISPR-Cas9, zinc fingers, and talons. They can also be used for gene replacement. Today, I'm gonna to focus on immunobiology. Uh, so these are also useful for developing CAR T cells, engineering CAR T cells, and vaccines for various infections diseases. Um, you can also use these for personalized cancer vaccines. So a one of a kind vaccine for a single patient. And today I'm gonna to focus on a particular type of platform called self-replicating or self-amplifying RNA vaccines. So what are these? And I'll refer to these as SAM vaccines or self-amplifying messenger RNAs. <clears throat> so these are self-replicating RNAs. that are an exciting new platform for vaccine development. They're frequently derived from uh, viral backbones such as alpha viruses. Today, I'm going to focus on Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus-based backbones, but you can also use some leaky forest virus and synbis virus platforms to do these. These replicate through a double-stranded intermediate. And in these viruses, we've taken the structural genes of the virus and deleted them so that it can produce no infectious virus. Instead, in the place of the structural proteins, we place the antigen of interest. This stimulates innate immunity um, and enhances vaccination. And because they amplify, you produce tens of thousands of copies per transfected cell, and this requires very low, low doses. And another really important aspect to these vaccines is because they don't require cells or eggs or other uh, in vivo systems to produce them, they can be produced rapidly in response to pandemics such as the coronavirus epidemic. <clears throat> so this is what a SAM vaccine looks like. So there are an RNA encapsulated within a lipid nanoparticle. At the top, you can see the genomic RNA. There's positive strand capped RNA with a poly A tail. Again, the non-structural proteins still exist, and these are forming the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase that's going to replicate this RNA. And in place of the structural genes, we replace these with an antigen of interest. This RNA is replicated by the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase into a negative strand RNA. And this, in turn, is replicated again to produce more of the positive strand RNA, as well as a subgenomic RNA 
uh, that's producing the antigen. This double-stranded RNA intermediate is recognized by the innate immune system as a pathogen, as a virus. And so it actually stimulates pattern recognition receptors such as PKR, MDA5, and RIG-I. <clears throat> this second response, which is called the danger response, lets the cell know that there is some pathogen within it. And this actually enhances both the innate and adaptive arms of the immune system to achieve a really potent vaccination. So in developing a new SAM vaccine in response, say, to a pandemic, you would take the circulating strain that's um, been sequenced, say, in China of COVID. You transfer that and do gene synthesis of your vector, and then you produce a self-amplifying RNA in vitro off of a DNA template. This is just then injected into the patient, and then that small number of RNAs replicates within the, the patient, simulating a viral infection, but also producing the antibody epitope that <clears throat> is desired for the, um, that particular vaccination. And so because of that, you require very small doses because the vector amplifies once it's inside the cell. However, there's a little bit of a conundrum for producing an alpha virus uh, based vaccine. And that is that on the left here, you can see the structure that is at the five prime end of the alpha virus genome. And you might note that it starts with an A. However, T7 polymerase very strongly prefers to initiate with a G. And for that reason, researchers generally put an additional G at the five prime end of the RNA in order to be able to in vitro transcribe this. However, research has shown that the end of the RNA, the sequence that's there at the end of the RNA is important for viral replication. And so it's suboptimal to have this additional guanosine residue at the end of the RNA. So let's focus a little bit on the cap of the RNA. So caps are important for translation of the RNA, but they're also important for self, non-self recognition by the cell. And so here I'm showing what's shown as a cap zero structure. So you have an N7 methyl G at the end. And then at the first sugar, if there's an OH there, then this structure is called cap zero. Cap zero is not found in higher eukaryotes and is recognized as a viral sequence by the cell. <clears throat> In essentially all eukaryotic messenger RNAs, there is a 2 prime methyl group at the first sugar uh, after the cap. And we call this structure a cap one structure. So how do people produce these RNAs? So traditionally what's been done is they've you had an RNA with an extra G at the end, and then they do in vitro transcription and then use enzymatic capping in order to produce the cap at the end of the RNA. However, you have to do a purification prior to doing the capping reaction. And these mRNAs for these alpha viruses are quite long, anywhere from nine to 16 KB, and they can be easily degraded during purification. And so whenever it's possible, we'd like to skip purifying the RNA for a variety of reasons. First, it's, it's expensive to do the purification, and then also because the RNA degrades. Um, another thing is that in order to do the enzymatic capping, you have to disrupt this cap, this uh, stem loop structure using heat, and that can also lead to degradation of the messenger RNA. <coughs> another way to do the capping is to use a cap analog. For example, anti-reverse cap analog is shown here in this structure here. There you, use um, a ratio of cap analog to GTP, where you use an excess of this cap analog in order to achieve efficient capping of the RNA. However, in order to get, say, 70% capping, you need to starve the reaction for GTP because GTP competes with the cap analog for initiation at the first position of the promoter. And so you end up with low capping efficiency and a relatively low yield of about 1.5 mg per mil from a capping with these co-transcriptional cap analogs called ARCA, or anti-reverse cap analog. So in order to solve the problem of initiating with a, a residue other than G, 
and the, also the low yield and the low capping, we developed at TriLink a new cap analog, which we call CleanCap AU. Here you can see in this structure that rather than initiating, and previously we were initiating with a dimer, a capped dimer, we're now initiating with a capped trimer, where this A and U sit down at the plus one and plus two position of the promoter. This has a number of different effects. So it allows us to <clears throat> initiate efficiently um, without using an excess of, uh, of the cap analog over the NTPs and gives us this cap one structure. So this leads the authentic alpha virus five prime end. You get extremely high capping efficiencies of around 99%. The capping is not influenced by the five prime structure of the RNA and so there's no need to heat the RNA during the um, capping process. You can also do a one pot reaction without the need for further purification. And this ends up giving you yields that are much higher than um, with the other approaches. In order to look at the cap status of the messenger RNA, which is actually kind of challenging because you're looking for the addition of a single methyl group to an RNA that might be 10,000 bases long. We developed a capping assay at TriLink that allows us to look at the cap status of the RNA. So in this assay, we basically chop off the end of the RNA and then analyze the fragment of, at the end by LCMS. And on the right, you can see some examples of uh, the different types of capping using this capping assay. So on the left, we have ARCA capping. Uh, this was the co-transcriptional capping. And you can see that even when you use an excess of the cap analog, that you get a capping to produce cap one, but you also have a substantial amount of uncapped material, approximately 30% of the material is uncapped and has a triphosphate on it, which is immunogenic and also is not translated. In the middle, I've shown you a capping reaction that has not gone to completion, for example, if the structure was not completely melted. And you can see the various cap intermediates that are present in the reaction. And on the right, you can see a capping reaction with clean cap where the vast majority of the material is capped with only a very small amount of uncapped material. <clears throat> so in comparison with say enzymatic capping, we've reduced the number of steps from four steps to two steps and made a one pot reaction. When you're doing GMP re manufacturing, if you can reduce the number of steps, uh, this is highly desirable. We also reduce the number of enzymes that are used in the reaction by two. And so there's less enzymes to qualify. And in the end, we get about three times the yield compared to co-transcriptional capping methods using clean cap. And so we think that this has some really interesting advantages. And it's for this reason that this technology has been rapidly adopted by people doing mRNA vaccines in the field. And so here is um, a, a interesting um, timeline where we show the amount of time that it took for us to do a vaccine manufacturing campaign. <clears throat> and um, so you can see that in a short number of days, we're able to go from um, being contacted by the client in order to deliver the end vaccine that we need. Another recent development at TriLink is that we are about to start launching a self-amplifying mRNA entry vector. So many researchers are intimidated by the fact that these are complicated and that there is a need um, to obtain a viral backbone in order to clone in your antigen. And so <clears throat> we're currently validating a new construct we call PMRNA VEE CAN in which we have the non-structural proteins of the RNA present. We have a cloning site in order to clone your antigen of interest and a linearization site, which will allow us to be able to manufacture these vaccines for you. So basically you send us an open reading frame sequence in a digital form, and we end up sending you back an mRNA expressing a self-amplifying messenger RNA. So recently we moved into a beautiful new facility here in Mira Mesa, San Diego um, to produce uh, mRNAs. And so this is a, a new greatly expanded suite that has five different GMP manufacturing suites, which allows us to do five different programs simultaneously. 
And so we can do custom design and manufacturing of your GMP grade mRNAs. So at TriLink, <clears throat> we specialize in early phase uh, clinical manufacturing. So we can take you from your preclinical batches, research grade manufacturing into phase one clinical trials at gram scales. We can then help you with scale up and your subsequent phase two studies um, where we're producing grams to kilograms of messenger RNA. So we have profound and extensive experience in nucleic acids. So we've been doing this for over 24 years. We were the pioneer in mRNA contract manufacturing before anyone else was doing this. And so we've made thousands of messenger RNAs. We have a management team that's proven in the life science industry um, with lots of expertise. And we have a growing number of employees um, that, that your service to produce these messenger RNAs. We also have an extremely well-developed quality system, um, which is very important for doing uh, manufacturing of GMP grade mRNAs. So we are ISO certified and we're also compliant with uh, ICH guidelines. We have a fully traceable document system and we're frequently audited um, by outside vendors and, and companies that are our clients. And so we have an extremely robust quality system. So we can give you uh, a variety of different surfaces, anywhere from basic research. We manufacture diagnostic grade oligonucleotides for diagnostics. We can take you through preclinical programs with your messenger RNA and all the way to your clinical trial. And we have an extensive team of scientists that can help you with your uh, different needs. And so at the bottom, you can see some contact information um, for our sales team that can help you get quotes for your research grade RNAs. And we also have a, a team that specializes in GMP. And so they can guide you um, from the very beginning, even if this is your first GMP manufacturing run, um, in how to do GMP manufacturing. And so. Um, we take you from the research grade all the way seamlessly through GMP manufacturing. And so with that, I'll pause and see whether any of you have any questions about our interesting new technology of CleanCap AU for the production of self-amplifying messenger RNAs. Thank you for the great presentation, Anton. Uh, we will go ahead and take some of your, uh, take some time for your questions now. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box into your control panel. <clears throat> we already have some, some questions lined up, so we'll go ahead and <clears throat> take those. Uh, great question for you, Anton. Is the capping efficiency of CleanCap AU, AG, NGG all the same? How do you determine which of those uh, three clean caps to use? And when, and the last portion of the question is, is pricing um, of all clean cabs the same? So um, Sally is alluding to the fact that we actually have a variety of different sequences of clean cap that can be used for manufacturing. In our general manufacturing, we often use a clean cap analog called clean cap AG, which has a efficient capping. In the case of the alpha virus, we've chosen a different sequence in order to mimic the sequence of the, um, in, of the alpha virus that's normally present. And so um, those all have uh, relatively similar um, efficiencies of capping. They're greater than 95%. Um, and the costs are similar for using each of the different clean cap analogs. Perfect. Um, so another question is, um, is there a reason to produce self-amplifying mRNA with modification in terms of uh, the base, backbone, or sugar for uh, vaccines? Sure. So we didn't really get into that in this particular presentation, but another of the marks that allows the cell to recognize an RNA as a self-RNA versus a foreign RNA, such as one produced from a virus, is that um, you can have chemical modification of some of the bases in the RNA. So for example, uh, messenger RNAs contain things like um, pseudouridine um, in, in the bases or uh, N6-methyladenosine. 
and these RNAs can license the um, the RNA as a self RNA. However, when we're making an, a messenger RNA for a vaccine, as opposed to say for genome editing, then the um, the desire is not to necessarily evade the innate immune response, but rather it's beneficial to actually stimulate the innate immune response a little bit in order to serve as an adjuvant effect. And so in that case, we don't really want to, um, to avoid the innate immune response. We want to stimulate it. Another aspect is that because these RNAs are replicating, the um, replication is uh, in part based on the structure of at the five prime and three prime ends. And using modified nucleotides can inhibit some of the functions of this RNA that needs to replicate. And so in general, when people are using self-amplifying RNAs, they're using a, an unmodified wild-type nucleotide, um, wild nucleotides for the production of these RNAs. All right, thank you, Anton. Um, one more question. Um, if I have a construct ready for a typical ARCA, what development needs to be done to prepare it for clean cap manufacturing? <clears throat> is that sure. done by the researcher or does trialing generate the template? So if you're going to be doing ARCA capping, you would generally be starting with the G residue at the five prime end. And so um, if you're going to use clean cap AU, you would need to change the structure or, or the sequence of the template at the very five prime end region that is just downstream of the T7 RNA polymerase promoter. And so, for example, you would change uh, if you had uh, a GAU and a traditional alpha virus backbone, you would change that sequence to just AU. Um, and so you can um, have, you can do that yourself or you can uh, have our team do that through an external uh, cloning vendor uh, or plasmid synthesis vendor. And we can guide you through all those kinds of, of decisions as you, uh, you know, come and talk to us and we'll help you manage that. Perfect. <clears throat> um, another question is, what kind of purification do you use post clean cap AU process in large scale? And there was another one kind of tag along this one um uh what purification strategy does training use for gmp manufacturing they kind of go hand in hand sure so for the purification really depends on what application you're going to use your rnas for so if you're doing a gene replacement or a gene synthesis or sorry a, a genome editing application you would want to have an rna that does not induce innate immune um, silencing and in this case it may be beneficial to do hplc purification um, the reason for that is that during the T7 transcription, uh, we produce uh, some residual double-stranded RNA that can be immunogenic. And uh, HPLC purification can be used to remove that double-stranded RNA. In the case of a self-amplifying RNA, that double-stranded RNA is desirable because it acts as an adjuvant. And so we've developed another purification method which we call LC isolation which is it efficient at removing NTPs, enzymes, residual DNA, that kind of thing, um, but does not remove double-stranded RNA. And so at TriLink, we'll tailor the purification method to your particular application. Perfect, thank you. Um, kind of to, this question is kind of related to the previous ones. Um, what is the largest scale at trialing for RUO and GMP uh, manufacturing? So at trialing, we're currently manufacturing at multi-gram scales, um, but we're actually involved in a number of vaccine programs. Um, for example, we're involved with a vaccine program at Imperial College of London, um, where we are scaling up to much larger scales for their later stage clinical programs. And so that is a little bit of a work in progress, but right now we manufacture at multigram scales and are gearing up to be able to manufacture at kilogram scales. All right. And then um, another question about our GMP manufacturing, is trading compliant with the EMEA GMP? With EMA? 
Yeah, e EMA, yeah. Sure. So yeah, so we manufacture for people around the world, and so um, we are compliant um, with uh, FDA regulations and with EMA regulations. So um, there's a ICH guidelines which are harmonized between those two uh, regions, and so um, we are basically compliant with ICH guidelines, which work for both the U.S. and for Europe. All right. Um, another technical question. Does this technique resemble mRNA suppression by microRNA? So and microRNAs function by binding in general to the three prime untranslated regions of messenger RNAs and cause their degradation or their suppression of translation. Um, and so in that way, your body regulates coordinately groups of, of genes. And so this technology is is uh, dissimilar from that. It's not impossible that there might be a microRNA that's modulating the replication or the function of an alpha virus RNA, um, but these operate in by different mechanisms. So we're utilizing the innate and adaptive immune response in order to mobilize B cells and T cells uh, to a, attack a, a, a pathogen. And so these function by different mechanisms. Thank you, Anton. <clears throat> um, one more question: um, How do you how do you administer um, some mRNA um, into the human body? So, in general, these are formulated into a lipid nanoparticle, or sometimes an emulsion, um, which basically is a little soap bubble. And this um, protects the RNA from degradation and also helps it fuse with the plasma membrane of the cell. And so in general, the RNAs are formulated into a lipid nanoparticle and then are given by an intramuscular injection uh, into, the, uh, into the person, the patient, uh, to be vaccinated. That RNA will then um, a small num amount of that RNA will be able to access the cytoplasm of the RNA of the uh, cell, and the RNA will start replicating and producing the antigen of interest. Eventually, because of the double-stranded RNA and the innate immune response within the cell, that cell will apoptose, and the reaction is self-limiting, and, and the replication of the virus of the of the RNA stops. Um, but you produce the antigen, you produce a danger signal that alerts the immune system that uh, there's something that's there that you should be producing antibodies against. And then we also produce T cells that will go and now kill cells that have that antigen that was expressed in the original SAM vector. All right, we have maybe a couple of minutes to go over a question or two. Um, um, one additional question, how does RNA conformation and secondary structure affect the immunogenicity? So that's an interesting question. I don't really know the answer to that. So um, we know that these SAM vectors, these alpha virus-based vectors, have structures in them that are required for replication of the RNA inside the cell. Um, however, uh, these in general are short strands of double-strandedness. Um, that are really the, the alpha virus is intending to evade the innate immune response, um, but they're probably the structures within the RNA do contribute to immunogenicity, but I, I don't really know the exact answer to that question. Perfect. Um, okay, maybe enough time for one more question. <laughs> um, is there any in vivo data comparing ClinCap AU and enzymatic capping for SAMs? So yeah, so we actually did produce some data um, of that type. And um, so we did that with uh, synthetic genomics um, prior to them dissolving as a, as a company. And so the clean cap compared favorably to enzymatic capping of the uh, RNA for a self-amplifying RNA. All right. Looks like we're almost out of time. Um, thank you again, Anton, for the great presentation. And thank you, everyone, for your participation. Um, apologies if we didn't get to your questions. You are more than welcome to reach out to CELS at Training Biotech with any question you may have uh, regarding ClinCap AU.
please visit the event page on our website for upcoming webinars. Until then, um, take care, everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody.